Hi, welcome to this video, and we're going to start to learn about context-free automata, the automata for context-free uh, languages, and that's called a push-down automata. But before we get started on that, let's just uh, talk a little bit about grammars. So we have learned about context-free grammars, and the rule of context-free grammars is that the left-hand side must have a single variable, and the right-hand side can be any combinations of variables and terminal symbols. So there's this, uh, in the study of language theory, we've been studying language theory, and one of the most important reasons that you study language theory is because you can use it to define programming languages and to construct interpreters and compilers for programming languages. So like I said in some of the other videos, there are classes called compiler writing and classes called uh, programming languages, and this is kind of a foundation and overview of the study of languages and the theory of computation, and then you get into more detail in those classes. But since we've been doing grammars and we've learned now about context-free grammars, I kind of I wanted to show you this Bacchus nor form grammar. So this is used uh, to define programming languages more precisely. So let's get started and look at the rules of it. So. This is a grammar, just like we've been using grammars. It's just a little bit different, and the syntax is a little different, but the concept is the same as what we've been doing with context-free grammars. You have a set of terminal symbols. You have a set of non-terminal symbols. So we've had terminal symbols already. Those are our, our lowercase a's and b's. And then we've had our non-terminal symbols. Those are our variables like s and capital A and capital B. And then you have a bunch of production rules. So we have left-hand side and right-hand side. In this uh, form of a grammar, the left-hand side, and it just has a different um, syntax, but you still have a left-hand side, and the left-hand side has one single non-terminal symbol. So just the same way that we have a single variable on the left-hand side of a context-free grammar, you also have a single non-terminal symbol on the left-hand side of this grammar. The right-hand side is uh, combinations. And then you just have production rules. So let's just go through uh, the structure here. So the left-hand side, instead of being a single variable, it's going to have be a name in brackets. And then the right-hand side is the expansion of that name. So the symbol in the middle, instead of uh, being an arrow, it just means may expand into or may be replaced with. So every name is surrounded by brackets. Whether the name is on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, it has brackets. And then we expand that, and the expansion can include names, and it can also include um, non-terminal uh, symbols. So non-terminal symbols are names, and terminal symbols are literals. So I just explained all this, and um, but I think looking at an example will make it much more clear. So here is an example of a grammar for a very su small subset of a program programming language. This grammar is uh, the name here is addition. So we're going to take addition and you can break addition down into numbers and you can take numbers and break that into or expand that into signed and unsigned integers. And then you can take an integer and expand that into digits or combinations of digits and integers. And then digits, of course, are literals. That's why they are highlighted here. And signs are plus and negative. So again, this is if you take a look at this on the left hand side, just like we've been doing with context free grammars, but instead of having a single variable on the left hand side, we have what's called a non terminal or also called a name, right? So this right here uh, is, uh, this production right here ha doesn't have any literals in it, but addition can be made of taking a number and adding it to another number. And then you can take your number and it can be made of signed and unsigned integers. And an integer is made of digits or combinations of digits and integers. And a digits are these are the these are the terminal symbols, and then you have unsigned and signed plus and negative. And this is just a very small subset, so you can see how uh, how expanding this into programming languages 
there's a there's a lot involved there but you hopefully you can see the relationship between context free grammars and this type of grammar right so i just this just builds it up the other way signed and unsigned digits digits and integers integers are signed or unsigned and they make they are numbers and addition can be expanded into number plus a number all right so now uh, after we went through that, we are now going to do context-free um, push-down automata. So let's start learning about push-down automata. So this is the automata, like a DFA, NFA are for regular languages. A push-down automata is for context-free languages. So it is a, it is we're going to do non-deterministic pushdown automata. So that's called an NPDA for short. Okay, we cannot. There are no like we had regular expressions with regular languages, context-free languages. We do not have any expressions for context-free languages. We have grammars, and now we will have NPDAs. All right, it is a finite automata. It has a finite number of states, but you can have an infinite language as we already should know by now when we started learning about regular languages have a uh, are also infinite um, context-free languages of course can also be infinite and the stack can also be infinite but the automata is a finite state machine and we are going to be doing non-deterministic so let's get started with an example oh this is also, this is just an image from the book where you have your input file. So in this case, your input is going to be your um, alphabet. And then you have your control unit, which is your NPDA. And then we have an added stack. So in this case, you are can save and store things in your stack. And your options are to uh, push onto the stack, pop off from the stack, replace what's on the top of the stack, or leave the stack alone. So we're going to do examples that include all of those. All right, so let's now do a formal definition of an NPDA. It is a seven tuple. It is made of a finite set of states, just like a DFA and an NFA. You have your alphabet, the same as a DFA, NFA. We'll be using A, B, A, B, C, maybe 0, 1. Simple alphabets to do simple um, you know, just to practice. You have a new thing now called the stack alphabet. The stack alphabet is what's on the stack. So you have um, a fine, so your transition function, the transition function, this is non-deterministic, so it's allowed to have lambda transitions, but in making a transition, you have to look at the top of the stack, and then you are, you may, uh, modify the stack. So the modifications you can do to the stack, you can push something onto the stack, you can pop, you can ignore, or you can replace what's at the top of the stack. All right, we have our initial state, we have our initial stack symbol. There must be uh, this is our starting stack symbol. The stack cannot be empty. So when we start out the stack, we have our stack, and we will start out with a symbol on our stack. And then you can push onto the stack. You can pop off the stack. You can completely, on a when you make a transition, you can completely ignore what's in the stack, or you can pop off and replace what's on the top of the stack. So we're going to do some. Uh, we're going to do some examples. You have your final states, your accepting state, and I just said you cannot move if there's an empty stack. So you, if you pop off the stack, you're stuck. You don't move. You, you can only move if there is uh, something on the stack. It cannot be empty. All right, so I think the best way to understand this is to do an example. So let's get started. Uh, in the next video, I will get started with an example.